This is a specimen picture of a colon and the obvious pathology is seen in this area here which is the formation of a mass and this mass is luminal or arising from the mucosal surface. There is ulceration as you can see here and a little bit of darkish areas of hemorrhage. Now this mass is circumferential, it is involving the full circumference of the bowel wall and therefore when you just imagine it closed up it is most likely stenosing as well. Now when we zoom in, let us first uh, recognize the most uh, readily visible layer of the bowel wall. This brown line here is actually the muscularis propria. So it's important to actually recognize this grossly because when we're thinking about tumors, we can actually see how deeply it has penetrated. And this is the area, if you look at the side view of the colonic wall, it is clearly an invasive mass that is going into the wall. In fact, you can see here that the brown line of the muscularis propria is kind of stopped over here and this fleshy tumour is going through it down into the subserosal tissue. The same thing you can see here, the muscularis propria is continuous here and then here it stops short because there is invasion of the tumour right through it. So the diagnosis in this case is colorectal carcinoma and of course on histology it is an adenocarcinoma because it is a gland forming carcinoma. It's a gland forming malignancy of the epithelial cells. Now clinically uh, let's just go one step further and think about the signs and symptoms in such a patient. Well I think very obviously one can guess that there is going to be some form of obstruction and the actual symptoms will really depend on how proximal uh, the tumour is. So if it is fairly distal, the patient will present with constipation and also change in bowel habits such as narrowing of the calibre of the stool. There can also be bleeding and again this will depend on how proximal the tumour is. If it is in the proximal colon, for example the ascending colon, then usually you would not get fresh blood in the stools but the patient would present with anemia. So maybe fatigue, pallor, or the patient will feel a little bit more breathless on exertion. If this is located in the more distal colon such as the rectum, then the patient would present with blood in the stools and this sign is called hematochesia. Furthermore, this patient can also present with systemic symptoms such as loss of weight or loss of appetite and this is commonly seen in cancer patients, especially those of a more advanced stage. So just to complete the picture, what would be very important is to prognosticate this tumour and how can the pathologist help in this? It is by staging of the tumour where we can ascertain the depth of invasion and we can do this both grossly as well as confirming it under the microscope to see which layer of the wall it has gone through. We can also assess the regional lymph nodes, so this would be the nodal status or the um, end stage. The metastasis, usually this is done more by the radiologist because the pathologists do not receive the metastatic tissue and usually if it's metastatic, the, the tumour will be considered inoperable so we would not get the primary resection. And of course another thing that the pathologist will always do is to grade this tumour, assessing it histologically to see whether it's well differentiated, meaning that it's got very well formed glands in most of the tumour, or is it poorly differentiated, meaning that less areas are gland forming and instead we just maybe see sheets, solid sheets of cells. So the diagnosis is colorectal adenocarcinoma and just looking at this picture we can actually work out quite a few of the clinical signs and symptoms that this patient will present with.